another episode of EMA Cloud Rants uh, today with Konstantin Söldner. And Konstantin, you are the AWS expert. And uh, the interesting thing that we are seeing this year is last year and the year before was all about containers, right? It was a progression away from, oh, you have to use VMs and provision them. That takes a few minutes. Now you can do containers in a second. But then we found that there's still a lot of admin, a lot of management to be done with containers. And today, the whole big talk is about serverless computing. And uh, can you talk a little bit about serverless computing, what it is, uh, what it means to the administrator? Uh, to the administrator. Yeah, well, uh, what the name already implies is um, you don't have to manage servers, so um, this is a big advantage. Um, uh, with containers, it was already a big step forward as um, you didn't have to um, install so many dependencies on individual servers to run an application because as a container, in, in fact, already brings along its dependencies, which all already facilitates, it facilitates the job of an administrator. Mm. and. Um, it even goes further in this direction with serverless programming, where um, finally you still have a container um, because um, in serverless programming, um, your function which you want to run still runs in a container, but it's not you who's responsible, responsible for it. So um, mm. take a look at AWS Lambda. Um, it's an infrastructure where most people are not even assuming that they're running a container. It's a good point. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good point. Yeah, it depends so, on who manages uh, the container, right? You don't have to have those experts anymore because you have your VMware guys, right? And now you tell your VMware guys, okay, you have to now manage a container infrastructure on site. Uh, they're going to go to classes. They're going to uh, try and learn this. But it's still more complexity. It's still more heterogeneity. It's still more OPEX that you actually initially wanted to avoid. But with serverless, somebody else worries about the containers, right? You don't even see them. True. And um, another advantage it brings along is, of course, scalability, um, especially if a big cloud provider, um, let's say AWS, but other ones are also trying to get a foothold on it, um, are just offering more capacity. So once you want to deploy a function and you don't yet know how many resources you're going to need for it, um, it doesn't really matter for you. So um, because Amazon, as it says, has enough resources to run your function as many times you want so um yeah it you get rid of a lot of administrative um things you needed to do in in case you want to run your own container infrastructure it's true that's one of the most important benefits of it and for you as and, a development guy you used to spend a ton of time provisioning your infrastructure finding and configuring the right uh, instances of whatever you needed databases servers everything uh, the serverless, uh, all you focus on is writing your code, right? You write your functions, you write your logic, and then somebody else, Azure, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, they have, uh, sorry, IBM, they have OpenBISC uh, uh, in that area. They deal with uh, worrying about what containers have to be spun up and how quickly they have to be spun up and how they have to talk and how they have to scale. That's all their problem, right? Your problem is just... Uh, building your code, building your business logic. True, and there's actually not a lot which you can configure. Sometimes, or some developers might think they want to have um, a little bit more control. Um, take AWS, for instance. Um, uh, basically, the only thing uh, regarding infrastructure you need to configure is the amount of memory um, mm. your function is going to consume. Right. And um, the maximum runtime of your function, which is limited. So um, currently with AWS Lambda, it's five minutes. Um, but I guess so most people are expecting this will go up. Um, but um, in terms of infrastructure, that's pretty much it. So there's not more you have to take care of. So and when you look at how this compares to VMware and this VMware AWS partnership, that's very interesting, right? Because they will let you run vSphere workloads on AWS very shortly in the second quarter this year. That's the plan. And if you do that, and they've already said they give you access to all of those uh, functions, to, to Lambda, to sorry services uh, from, from AWS. So you can then uh, take your applications from your data center and move them to to Amazon on vSphere, but you can access those great AWS Lambda capabilities and step function capabilities and expand your existing legacy applications and at a certain point replace them with that. And then VMware is standing there with not all that uh, many workloads anymore. That's a interesting 
start, right? Yeah, so um, if you take a look at the heterogeneity, which um, nowadays uh, you have in the data center, um, you will not do it without um, serverless programming or Docker in, in that regard in the future. Um, you see already a lot of different um, contributions by the community regarding administrative infrastructure management. Mm. Um, just take a look at GitHub, for instance. Um, people have plenty of ideas yeah. um, what kind of things they are going to automate with Lambda especially mm. and um, this next step um, which um, was uh, just recently announced by Amazon or which they released is um, a service called AWS step functions yeah. um, and um, this takes uh, this idea of lambda a step further as it uh, the thing is a lambda function itself is well it's just a function and um, you're still missing somebody who is doing some coordination orchestration um, especially when you want to run a couple of Lambda uh, functions in a row, meaning some kind of a workflow. Mm -hmm. And um, here come the step functions uh, delivering exactly this capability. Right. So, and um, I see plenty or many use cases, not just infrastructure management for the step functions, but it could also replace certain um, ETL processes, right. so which means uh, loading data in a data warehouse or similar stuff. Um, um, this is so something I think um, we have to. Uh, expect a lot of good ideas um, coming right. um, from the community. So if I was uh, building a new application from scratch and my developer told me uh, they want to do the traditional way, I, I would always say, no, you guys have to look at event-based programming. You have to look at Lambda and at Step Functions or the equivalent for Microsoft or from IBM. It has so many advantages to not have to worry about the infrastructure, to have scalability built in, uh, to only pay as you go, which is another interesting piece. You, you pay just when, uh, when you are using uh, the, the compute and afterward, uh, it, it gets, you know, it's not your problem anymore, right? There will be containers in the background that get spun down and everything, but you don't pay for that. So if you run containers on, on ECS, you pay for that whole cluster, right? Whether you use them or not. So there is a lot of advantages uh, to, to the serverless computing uh, from an economics perspective as well. Thank you very much, Constantine, And uh, thanks for watching. This was another episode of EMA Cloud Rants. Thank you, Justin, and goodbye.